New benchmarks for Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, and they're fast, my goodness. Intel is shutting down their GPU department already? And RTX 40 series benchmarks. It's a benchmark heavy episode. Let's get into hot news, everybody. I am your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is talking about new benchmarks that are coming out on the Ryzen 5 7600X. These details are coming from user benchmark, which makes it a little suspect because in case you don't know the whole history, user benchmark essentially hates AMD so far as like when they submitted the these benchmarks to their website instead of advanced micro devices they named the company advanced marketing devices which I, they've got a bone to pick with them anyways with the cpu is the ryzen 5 7600x as mentioned and can boost up to 5 gigahertz which amd kind of made us think that we're going to get it a little faster but this is just an engineering sample that's being posted here but one of the big things is that with that speed what we're seeing is that this thing is fast it is 56 percent faster than the 5600x that's a lot of numbers so about 50 percent faster than the current generation in single core and then about 50% faster in their quad core benchmarks, not the six core because they don't have that. Additionally, it beats the 12900K Intel's premium chip right now by 22% in single threaded scores, but you can't really compare the multi-threaded because the 12900K is a higher class chip. But this does look to be a really good showing by the 7600X. If you take a look right here in single threaded score, the 7600X is really high, I believe. Based on other benchmarks we've seen, I don't think we've seen a 13900K user benchmark, but if we did, it'd be in the 230, 225 region. So potentially, this is gonna be crazy, but the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs, there's so many S's or S's in that. It's just, it bugs me. I can't keep saying that. Anyways, 7000 series will actually potentially be the fastest gaming chips because they're gonna be so fast and single threaded. But then if you wanna do productivity, you should get 13th gen because they're gonna have so many extra cores and threads because of all the P and E cores, which is a complete flop from what it was back when Ryzen first and second gen came out, where you were getting those for the multi-threaded because you could get up to eight cores and you were getting Intel if you wanted the fastest because it was the best at single threaded. We've done a switchery doodah. Potentially, this is all preliminary benchmarks, but good, good numbers. 22% faster than a 12900K in single threaded. That's something to get excited about. We'll obviously have to wait and see, but in case you ordered a Steam Deck, you don't have to wait and see anymore. Valve announcing that they're gonna get a ton of Steam Decks out. Essentially, everybody who had a reservation that said that they were gonna be either past Q3 or in Q3 is gonna be getting it by the end of the year. Everyone who currently has a reservation can get it by the end of the year, according to Valve, saying that they've cleared up supply chain issues, a bunch of folks got moved up to Q3, and all other reservations are now in Q4. Four, which hopefully should mean that maybe even some people who order right now might be able to get one for the holiday season or at least early into next year. Valve making great strides in making sure that they're getting Steam Decks out to people, but you might want to be careful with that because they are shipping a few slower than they initially spec them out to be, which you can watch our UFD tech video about that right up there. But regardless, still a great gaming device. And you know who's a great gaming device? Henry Cavill, also known as Geralt of Rivia. And he had some PC problems that he posted about over on Instagram, indicating that after a couple of years of moving his computer around and potentially due to the heat wave that just happened over in Europe, his AIO cooler gave up the ghost and is dead. So he had to replace it. Plus, he also swapped in some Noctua fans in this bad boy, saying that they're uh, really good. What, what what do you know? He replaced his AIO cooler with a, another AIO cooler, which appears to be this is the Kraken Z73. It's got the screen where it can display the temperatures. He says, don't worry, those temps are in-game, which is not too bad, 64 and 68 degrees Celsius on a 360 millimeter radiator. He's still going with it. Henry Cavill, one of us, really like that. Yeah. But now it's time to slay the monster of crypto stocks. Bitcoin's down just a little bit on the day. It had a mediocre Sunday, but then falling apart at the last second to be at 23,350. Still over 20 grand. Crypto market actually still staying pretty elevated compared to where it was just about a month ago. Ethereum down roughly 1% as well to be at 1681. And Dogecoin following suit in the exact same spectacle to be at 6.8 cents. Which, speaking of spectacles, a lot of you guys like the spectacle of Reese bringing the UFD deals. So let's switch it on over 
over to him. Hey, buddy. Hey, friends. Reese here, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today, we're starting off with the Logitech Brio 4K webcam, probably the best webcam that I've seen, in my opinion. Comes with HDR and a few other neat features, so if you really want to flex on those people during your Zoom meetings, here you go. It's currently going for $137.50, which is 31% off. And next up, we got two banger deals from EVJ. The EVJ Supernova 650 GA, which is a 650 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply, going for only $59.99, which is 54% off currently. And next, we have the EVGA Z690 Classified, which is their big boy 12th gen Intel motherboard. With the LGA 1700 socket with support for 12th gen Intel processors and DDR5, this is a beefy boy going for only $299.99, which is currently 52% off. It's bloody expensive, but it's really cool. It's really, really cool. Yeah, you can find all these deals and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. Never responds to me. It's like he's in a different continent or something like that, which people thinking that Stadia might be shutting down. They're in a different continent because that was a rumor that came out that Stadia was gonna close down by the end of summer. A Stadia fan group had somebody posting on it who was claims that a Google retail seminar, one of the friends said that there's an exit plan for Stadia shutting down the game streaming service by the end of summer. Stadia came out and was like, that's not true, but also using this for some marketing, saying an old coworker of mine is now one of the social managers for Google. They had a pretty large seminar in California this past weekend. And long story short, you can now play Wavetail at no additional cost on Stadia Pro until August 1, which is today. Anyways, good switcheroo into the marketing. Stadia is not shutting down, which now would be a good time to tell you about Intel shutting down their stuff, but I didn't schedule this correctly, which Uber hasn't been scheduling things correctly in case you've ever driven for Uber or Lyft. I can't remember. I think Lyft might have this as a feature. If you like unlock Lyft Gold or something like that, you have to drive for them for a while. Anyways, they don't show you as a driver how much money you're going to make from the trip until you accept the trip. No longer is that going to be the case. They'll allow drivers to actually see how much money they're going to make, and it should make it a little bit easier for drivers to have clarity on just exactly what's going on. I don't understand why they didn't do this in the first place. Anybody who's driven Uber, does this matter to you? Is this something that uh, you think is a quality of life improvement? Let me know down below in the comments. And Twitter wants to let you know that you're going to have to pay more for Twitter Blue, $5 a month. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time on this. The, the people who buy Twitter Blue probably aren't the people who are watching this hot news. And if you are, can I have some of your money that you just want to burn? And if you have attention span you want to burn, well, you can do it on YouTube Shorts. We've actually been releasing a few YouTube Shorts here on the Hot News channel, but YouTube wants to make it easier for creators to actually take content from their long form and turn it into Shorts by integrating that into the app. So on iOS, you'll be able to create edit into shorts, full length videos into the 60 second vertical clip. As you can see here, you can make that happen. I personally gotta be honest, not a fan of this because number one, 16 by nine content does not easily convert into nine by 16 content. Number one, from a framing perspective. Number two, from a consistency and just my ability to make shorts and TikToks over the last few months, taking long form content and turning it into short form content is bad. It just doesn't work the same way. It doesn't scratch the lizard brain in the same way. When I know you're gonna watch an episode of Hot News where you're gonna sit with me to 10 to 15 minutes on a given day, I'm gonna take a little time to ease you into it, give you some of my personality. But when I only have half a second to keep you on the screen and then 30 seconds at most of your attention span before you flip me away, then I have to structure the video differently. I actually don't think this is gonna make this much better for most creators. I think this is going to lead to low quality shorts and the people who are still making dedicated vertical content are gonna be the ones who actually get any benefit out of the YouTube shorts thing. One of the things that I did read over the weekend from somebody who's one of YouTube's product managers is that they're gonna start factoring in short views into the total algorithm so that they can push it to long form videos, which has been missing something that we've been seeing over on UFD Tech. We have a couple shorts that have passed three to 4 million views, but then there's no conversion on our long form videos, but our long form videos do push out to the shorts. So YouTube says that they're fixing that. And then once they do that, yippee ki -yay, more viewers everywhere getting to watch the hot news, but they won't be able to watch news about Intel's GPUs because there was a rumor that came out on Friday, which people even asked me in my discord, Hey Brett, why didn't you bring this up? Well, because it seemed really suspect. Uh, so there was a report that came out that Intel was shutting down their GPU department. Like they were done with Arc Alchemist. It wasn't working out. They weren't gonna move forward with it. You weren't getting their discrete GPUs. I personally was like that. 
like I have to see this from Intel's mouth because that doesn't, they've been doing marketing. They just had Ryan Shrout go over to Linus. They had them go to Gamers Nexus. Unless they're keeping some really big players in the dark like Ryan Shrout and Tom who were on those videos, I, I don't see this as a possibility. Well, it turns out it actually wasn't because there's new reports coming out by Igor out of Igor's lab saying that Intel's not going to be doing a huge grand launch, but they're going to be doing a soft launch August 5th to September 29th of the Arc Alchemist GPUs. But then also in an interview with PC Gamer, Intel said that they're only going to be formally launching these things when they have enough supply to actually start shipping out to customers. But then on top of that, Raja Kadori, who's the head of Intel's graphics department, talked about the fact that like, yes, we're not giving up on this. Where did you get this from? Quote tweeting a tweet that said, I can't believe some of the things I've seen people repeat on Intel's graphics division yesterday. How can you even believe that, especially considering Pat Gelsinger's history at Intel, Intel will not allow this to be another Larrabee, which was a project that got shut down way long ago. Intel's GPU department not shutting down. That didn't make any sense to me. It's not real. It's that they're gonna quit. They're gonna be doing what they've been doing, which is launching it in different regions when they have enough stock, when they're ready to go, they're promoting it. It's gonna come out. I don't see why it wouldn't at this point. It doesn't make any sense. But what Intel did shut down on Friday was their Optane memory business, which makes a lot of sense. There was a split between them and Micron, Micron taking over the technology for Optane and making it so that Intel doesn't have it anymore. And they're done with that business. A lot of people didn't end up using Optane memory, especially with the proliferation of NVMe drives, it just kind of lost its luster as like a thing that you would buy, especially when you had to have Intel hardware to use it. It just it got it. It was a weird place. And we're in a weird place where CPU should be launching sometime soon. We're waiting on 13th gen from Intel. We're waiting on 7000 series from Nvidia from AMD. Wow. My mouse all mixed up, but we've got new benchmarks coming out of the 13600K and 13700K. You can see right here, the orange, yellow, and blue are the 13600K and the other ones are the 12600K. So between a two to 12% improvement over the previous generation in certain games on DDR4, and then between a two and 14% increase on DDR5 with the 12700K, roughly the same. The improvements do seem to be pretty big. We'll leave a link in the video description if you want to peek a list at this gaming benchmark apparatus that has all of the little benchmarks that you can feast your eyeballs on. But in case you want to feast your eyeballs on RTX 40 series benchmarks, new reports about it. It's just a tweet saying that the 4080 got an over 15,000 score in time spy extreme. The 4070 got about 10,000 points, which if you compare that to the previous generation, the 4070 would be as fast as the RTX 3090 and the RX 6900 XT. And the 4080 would be twice that of an RTX 3080, even stomping on the face of the RTX 3090 Ti. So benchmarks continuing to come out that do seem to indicate like the RTX 40 series is going to be a heavy hitter generation. But as we've talked about, out previously it's going to come at the cost of power draw and just heat output it's going to be i hope you live in cool places my friends what's that one song by smash mouth where he talks about the me the media man beg to differ i don't know uh, all i know is i'm done with this episode of hot news thank you so much for watching we'll catch you back here for more hot tech news tomorrow my friends